chapter three of the handbook is a chapter on the activities of translation and interpreting as professional activities that help bridge languages and cultures. It comes after a chapter on languages in our daily lives and a chapter on uh, diversity in society. And now we look at how there are professions that deal precisely with these aspects of, of, of our lives from a professional perspective to enable communication. So this chapter has been written in a way that can be uh, accessible to different readers. So, and it explains mm, the complexity that is involved in the tasks of translating or interpreting uh, in ways that are close to our daily experiences. It talks about the relevance of context when we are making decisions as translators and interpreters. It talks about the difficulty making decisions when you have to find um, equivalence between two cultures that may not uh, think about concepts in the same way. Um, it talks about some of the rules of thumb that translators and interpreters need to follow, but it gives examples so that students can understand what these examples, what, what, what these rules are all about. For that reason, you might give it to students to read at home as an assignment, as homework, uh, or you might use it yourself to get concrete information on some ideas on what to share with your students um, for them to get a better understanding of what translation and interpreting is. In fact, uh, the chapters have been designed in such a way that you can identify specific takeaways very easily. There are some digest boxes with summaries of what you might want to bring to your classroom. And there are some fun fact boxes. There are um, sections that we've called, did you know that? And then we give a fun fact about uh, whatever topic the chapter is about, in this case, translation and interpreting. So these are some fun content, some fun content that you can bring to your students. After all the content on what translation and interpreting is all about and on the reasons why it's developed over time as a professional activity, we also have some classroom activities at the end of the chapter that you can use to uh, practice with your students some of the specific difficulties that can arise in translation and interpreting. So they're not translation and interpreting activities per se, but they have been designed in a way that they will allow your students to experience some of those very interesting aspects of cultural differences of communication when there are three parties involved for two people to communicate, when misunderstandings can arise, when memory uh, is a key element to be able to convey messages. These activities will allow students to experience these essential aspects of translation and interpreting firsthand. Chapter three in particular has three activities within the book. Now you will also be able to find extra activities on the website uh, that you can actually print out. And some of the printouts include not just information for yourself, but also printouts that you might use in the classroom. Uh, there are charts and cards and instructions that the students will be using themselves. So we've made it as easy as possible for you to send it to the printer and take it to the classroom. So we hope it's fun. We hope it's informative and let us know if your students enjoyed it. <laughs>